The U.S. Gymnastics Championship Tournament begins today, but the sport is still reeling from the scandal over abuse by former U.S. National Team Dr. Larry Nasser. Nasser is serving up to 235 years in prison after he was found guilty of sexually abusing athletes in his care for decades. At his sentencing hearings earlier this year, more than 250 athletes read victim impact statements against him. They were very powerful. Now first on CBS This Morning, two more former Olympians are coming forward with their their stories. Kyla Ross competed in the 2012 Olympics as a member of the famous Fierce Five. We remember you, Kyla. They won a team gold medal. Madison, also known as Maddie Koshin, won a silver medal on the uneven bars as a member of the 2016 Olympic team. They also won a team gold medal. Both are members of the current NCAA champion UCLA gymnastics team. That's led by coach Valerie Condos Field, a 36 year veteran. So we reached out to USA Gymnastics, which told us this. USA Gymnastics support is unwavering for Kyla, Madison, and all athletes who courageously came forward to share their experiences. Their powerful voices and stories will continue to be a basis for our future decisions. Kyla Ross and Maddie Koshin and Valerie Condos feel join us at the table. Good morning to all of you. Good morning. Good morning. I want to start with that statement, guys, from U.S. Gymnastics, because when you hear that, you think what? Do you believe what they're saying? Their support is unwavering. Have you heard from them? Personally, we both have not heard anything, and it's been saddening to know that a lot of, a lot of gymnasts has, have gone through this event, mm -hmm. and they have not reached out and seen how we're doing as people, not as just athletes, but as individuals who grew up in the sport, um, just to know that. The same for you, Maddie. You've never heard anything. Yet when they say our support is unwavering, what do you make of that statement? Yeah, still to this day, I haven't heard anything. I even... Even after uh, Larry Nassar resigned and was asked to leave, I haven't heard anything from them. I went to compete at World Championships in fall of 2015 and the Olympic Games in 2016, and still to this day, I haven't heard any anything. What so would you like to hear from them? For me personally, just an apology and just to know that it's more than just support, it's help, and we all experienced such an, this awful event and to know that we competed all those years for our country and that we were disrespected in this way by this doctor and to know that it happened to so many people is very disheartening. Valerie, what do you make of this, this reluctance here that we've just been exploring and the original behavior by USA Gymnastics? It's, un <clears throat> excuse me, it's unfathomable. We just can't really put your, wrap your head around it. and. Um, you know, at, having been at UCLA for so many years and hearing the same stories from these athletes, um, telling the same, using the same words, that they felt it was a culture of fear that they were training under. They were, it was a culture of silence. Culture of winning. A culture of winning. At and what became so clear through all of this is just, is that any time you put winning and medals above people, you're going to open up your organization to a corrosiveness that will just spread like a disease. And we keep hearing, girls, that he got away with it for so long because of his personality. What does that mean, Maddie and Kyla? What was his personality that he was able to get away with this? It was almost like a family, a family member. And he would, on international trips, he would bring us food or he would just kind of be the person that would always ask, how are you doing? Because the culture that was at the Crowley Ranch was a culture of fear, a culture of silence, and that's what led him to be able to abuse us. And He seemed caring. Exactly. We reached out to the Crowleys who have not commented, uh, so we should, we should mention that. But this, this culture, Kyla, I mean, um, what is it like when you're in the middle of it? Is it basically you have to just uh, focus on winning and that's it? Yeah, being on national team for all those years, we were really silenced. We, we didn't really have a voice and a say as athletes, and I think that being able to compete at UCLA under the care of Ms. Fallon and all our coaches, we realized that as an athlete, we should have a voice, and this is our sport, and we should enjoy it and not just be there to, to win medals. Did you all not talk to each other? Did you all think that this was abuse, or did you just think this was a weird treatment? I'm, I'm amazed that it happened to so many girls at the same time. Was there no conversation? amongst yourselves? Th there was conversation, and I think it was such a normalized thing that between us, we didn't think any different of it. Because what did you think was happening, Maddie? What did you think he was doing? Uh, we were told that it was a medical procedure to, a lot of us had back uh, injuries or hamstring injuries, and 
that was our only option because he was our team doctor. And mm -hmm. if we were to speak up, that was our only avenue to accomplish our Olympic dreams. Yeah. And so if we were to speak up there, you, you probably wouldn't have been in that consideration for making that team. Mm -hmm. And Valerie, you knew Larry Nasser. Mm -hmm. I mean, so many people are questioning, what were the adults thinking? How did they not see the warning signs? Can you address that from an adult's perspective, sort of watching what was taking place? I believe it's because we protected Marta Caroli. The USA Gymnastics was more concerned in protecting Marta Caroli than checking in on our children, because they were children. They were 12, 13 years old at the yeah. time. And Larry was, as they said, a very kind, he was a gentle man. You thought he was too. I did. I put on his Facebook, happy birthday to a gentleman. And yeah. the Caroli said they didn't know. They had no idea until 20, after I the 2016 that. games. I believe that. You, well, you believe that because I of this gentleman. But the, that wasn't the problem. The problem was that they did not have anybody to go to. And that, there was, that they were so isolated at the ranch. And <clears throat> we protected Marta so much. You didn't question Marta. Nobody questioned Marta. Mm -hmm. Why? Because she won. Mm -hmm. And winning was very important. And when I asked, yeah. why do we allow, well, I was just talking about the verbal abuse and the, the mental abuse. Why do we allow that? They said, they looked at me like I was crazy. They said, because she wins, Val. I'm curious as to how this has affected you guys long term. Because it's very traumatic. Just reading the details are just very ugly and very uncomfortable. How's it affected you, Kyla, long term? At first hearing all the news about Larry, I, I really was in denial of it ever happening to me. I really, at that point in my life when I was 13, when it first happened to me, I believed that it was a legitimate form of treatment. But as the years have gone on and hearing all the impact statement of mm -hmm. all the girls that have come forward already, um, I've realized that it was something that a terrible event that had happened to us, but and you've dealt with it how um, Just being able to be supported by my friends and my family mm -hmm. and a lot of the other survivors um, I've been fortunate to, enough to have good support mm -hmm. um, It's definitely been a hard road, but to know that um, There's people that are caring about us including now. their coaches. Yeah, their personal coaches are amazing And we're really grateful that all of you are here and thank you Kyla Thank you, and Maddie, thank you. And Valerie, and, thank you so and much. that there's stars on the UCLA gymnastics. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>